Welcome to The Real News, I'm Kim Brown. On Thursday, March 26, U.S. Attorney General Bill Barr announced the $15 million bounty on the head of the president of Venezuela, Nicolas Maduro, accusing him of drug trafficking. Here was Maduro's response. El gobierno de Donald Trump. The government of Donald Trump, in an action that is extravagantly extremist, vulgar, and miserable, has put out a number of false accusations, like a racist cowboy of the 19th century who puts a price on the head of revolutionaries. Well, joining us today to discuss the ramifications of this is Joe Emmersberger. He is a writer and a contributor to FAIR.org, The Canary, also Telesaur English and Counterpunch. He joins us today from Windsor, Ontario. Joe, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me on. So on its face, these charges are a, a bit laughable, clearly serious, but at a time of a pandemic, that the, UN, that the United States government is spending any time attempting to charge uh, the head, of the, the sovereign head of another country with drug trafficking. Does the United States have any jurisdiction in this area to be charging Nicolas Maduro with drug trafficking? Well, yeah, the charges are laughable. I mean, they can claim jurisdiction because they can, I mean, they can make an argument that, that drug trafficking uh, brings drugs into the United States and does harm to the United States. In fact, the indictment against Maduro says that Maduro, uh, their strategy is to flood, somehow, somehow unexplained way, flood the United States with drugs to harm the United States and weaken it, I guess, uh, and which, which is really preposterous. The only people who could take that kind of allegation seriously are people who just believe that anyone the United States opposes has to be totally insane. I mean, not just a uh, for example, Saddam Hussein was a brutal dictator, but he was not irrational, he was not insane, he did not have weapons of mass destruction, but the part of the propaganda is always that the, whoever the United States wants to destroy is that they're just out of their minds, they have no rationality, and so anything goes, you can accuse them of anything. So, the, the, I mean, the allegation itself is, is, if you read the indictment, that you know, not only was Maduro involved, which is, which is uh, frankly laughable itself, but that the, the strategy behind it was to somehow hurt the United States by flooding it with drugs. Uh, I mean, it's just crazy. But, and also, you know, in the region, drugs are mainly produced in Colombia, mainly transported through other countries whose governments are aligned with the United States, and only a small percentage is, 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 is even, even goes through Venezuela at all. I mean, that's just according to the you know, DEA's own, own data. So it really, it, it has no, it really doesn't make sense on its face. But there's, I think there's another aspect that you're saying, you know, in, in a few other po important points. One is that, you know, the, one of the star witnesses that the United States is going to call is a general who says publicly that he was trying, he was getting arms together to, ar to overthrow Venezuela's government by force, and that he was working with Juan Guaido, the uh, uh, U.S. The person the U.S. recognizes as president, and also with U.S. advisors. So based on all he said publicly, actually Venezuela would have a, about a you know, thousand times more grounds to actually, for their courts, for their prosecutors, to issue indictments against U.S. officials, to charge them and to seek to extradite them into Venezuela to face charges for, for the, this conspiracy, which is a violent you know, conspiracy to do violence against the government. Now, of course, that will never happen because, I mean, no, the country just isn't powerful enough to enforce its laws the way the United States gets to play global cop and claim jurisdiction all over the world. But actually, Venezuela has much more grounds to to, to charge and seek to, and seek to extradite U.S. officials by now than the other way around. So, Joe, this seems like the latest attempt by the United States to undermine and discredit the elected leadership of Venezuela, as we're seeing here with Nicolas Maduro, and then we saw numerous times under the leadership of um, the late Hugo Chavez. Why is the United States determined to seize control in, in some way, shape, or form of Venezuela? Well, you know, what we see, thanks to the WikiLeaks revelations, you, you know, when you look at what um, U.S. officials are saying in private to each other, and their overwhelming concern is that, uh, and especially this idea that, you know, the, the United States wants to play lender of last resort always throughout the Americas. You know, they want to be the, the, the country that others rely on, depend on. And uh, if there's an alternative source of financing, an oil-rich country that could potentially um, become an alternative uh, to uh, for other countries, and that that undermines their ability to, to to exert influence in the region, and that's their overwhelming concern. You know, if you look at the countries that 
uh, United States has gone after in recent uh, in recent times. You know, uh, Iraq, uh, Russia, uh, Iran. You know, uh, Venezuela. They're all oil exporting uh, countries. You know, big oil exporting countries. And that that oil wealth gives them the potential the potential, mind you, to to become uh, regional players in their own right. Joe, you know, when I read this story on Thursday, my first thought was, ooh, this is Manuel Noriega all over again. For those who mm -hmm. don't remember, the 1989 invasion of Panama and the, the forcible removal of then President Manuel Noriega, he was also brought up on drug trafficking charges in the United States, where he did eventually serve some time. Uh, does the US government, in your opinion, Joe, on, are, are they going to attempt, I mean, we know they put the $15 million bounty on uh, President Maduro's head, but is there any chance there could be a, a, an invasion of Venezuela in order to extract him? I think a lot of things are, I think more likely, yeah, one thing that were important to remember about Panama is like, like some people have said, it basically came pre-invaded because it already had a U.S. base there, you know, which, which uh, Venezuela fortunately does not have. Um, so it would, be, it would be more difficult for that region. But the trends, yeah, are definitely extremely alarming. I mean, as of August of 2017, uh, Trump has repeatedly made the military threats, he's threatened blockades. Uh, you know, and so and he's he's made it clear to the generals. He made it crystal clear publicly, encouraging to rebel. Made it uh, send the message constantly that if if you do something to Maduro, if you overthrow the government, no problem. You're not going to have any problem from us. We'll, we'll welcome it. So they've been sending that message repeatedly. So could they go to the extreme of actually doing it themselves? I suspect what they try first is what this general I, I talked about earlier is, has admitted to doing is trying to organize some kind of proxy for the like Contra force. You know, like they used in Nicaragua to attack, uh, but so far that hasn't gone off the ground. But yeah, the, 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 it's a horrifying prospect because as they, as they escalate their rhetoric like this, uh, at some point, uh, what they call US credibility becomes at stake. You know, like the Mafia Don can only threaten you so many times, eventually the Mafia Don has to follow through or he doesn't, or he loses street cred, you know? So that's, that's kind of how I see the US. I see the US as the Mafia who has to, uh, you know, eventually might have to uh, establish its street cred by falling through on it on its threats. For now, they're just threats, but they're very frightening. So the Maduro government, in response to this latest action by the U.S., has called this an act of desperation. After all the other attempts have failed, political coups, economic sanctions, Nicolas Maduro still remains in power. However, could this latest move actually deal a blow to a nation that is already politically unstable? Well, you know, we have these uh, sanctions that uh, Trump introduced in, in August of 2017. He basically radically intensified Obama's sanctions, made them much more punishing, made them much more uh, clearly aimed at the entire economy. So by the end of 2018, a, a study by Mark Weisbroth and Jeffrey Sachs said that by the end of 2018, they had already possibly uh, been linked to about 40,000 deaths. Now, since that time, he's, he's kept increasing the, the, the severity of the sanctions. So th these are very murderous sanctions. So now what's happened with the uh, uh, coronavirus epidemic, you know, there's more pressure on them now. I think uh, they're feeling a bit of pressure in the U.S. to, to, to hey, this is really murderous. We have this global pandemic and you guys are still punishing countries. And so it seems like the, the uh, Trump administration stack is just to double down and, and get even crazier. Just, uh, you know, no, we're gonna, now we're going we're gonna to have to try even harder to demonize them to, to justify with the, these murderous sanctions and these threats. So it seems like they're just, uh, they're, 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 their defense has been an offense, you know, just to just get even crazier with the, with the allegations. Are we able to get a sense as to how this news or rather the support on the ground in Venezuela for either Nicolas Maduro or Juan Guiado? Uh, how are the Venezuelan people um, dealing obviously with everything that they have had in terms of the recent challenges and dealing with daily life in, in the wake of all these sanctions and now with the COVID-19 outbreak, um, a, a pandemic uh, obviously affecting their region as well. Wh whom do the Venezuelan people have trust in and who are they recognizing as their own leader? Are we able to get a sense of that? Well, you know, the best, the best polls we have uh, best indications we have are that you know Maduro has a very solid base of at least thirty percent of the of the population. That's how many turned out to vote for him in the 
2018, uh, 2018 presidential election. It also closely resembles what happened in the you know, regional elections, which were done several months earlier. So the, the, the um, Maduro government has a solid base. Guaido has not shown uh, has not shown any capacity to mobilize people, even before like before the pandemic. Of course, closed down you know mass mobilizations for anybody. Um, but he also, he's been he himself is, is linked to drug traffickers, and he's been photographed uh, using a, a Colombian uh, a drug trafficking gang to basically uh, serve as his informal security guards during while he was performing an aid stunt back in in February of uh, 2019. So he he's been he's been uh, the, he's been hit with scandals. Uh, he just he's failed to do what he said he was going to do, which is overthrow the government. So his his credibility is very low, but he probably has. You know, probably has like 20, 30 percent of the public who are so against the government that they'll support anybody, even even him. But uh, you know, they, they both have issues. But uh, I would say Maduro has a solid uh, support. But of course, you know, you have to wonder how long he can, um, you know, being hit so hard with sanctions, how long they can, uh, it, without suffering a horrendous humanitarian disaster. You know, it's not even a question of whether he stays in power or not, but at what. Uh, how this will how this will play out in terms of the, the humanitarian consequences of U.S. sanctions, which and, and on top of that a pandemic, and on top of that a dramatic fall in oil prices that has taken place since the coronavirus hit. You know, the oil prices have fallen by half. So uh, that's it's very serious. We've been speaking with Joe Emersberger. He is a writer, and you can find his work at a variety of places, including fair.org. Telesur English, The Canary, and Counterpunch, and we've been discussing the U.S. government charging Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro with drug trafficking. In response, the Maduro government has called this latest act desperate. Joe, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching The Real News Network.